The uh, Syrian Druze of the Golan Heights have actually been celebrating this uh, change in Syria. And this, of course, you know, it, you, we need to know and for more background here, the Syrian Druze generally were actually more pro-Assad. And in fact, I can just to give you a sense, um, about 10 years ago in the early years, let's say, in the first few years of the Syrian civil war, I remember going to Majdal Shams and for a similar report to get the point of view of the Syrian Druze in the Golan Heights. And they were all very much pro-Assad. I remember going into those homes and seeing pictures and posters of Bashar al-Assad, but also from the rest of the Assad family. These people were very much, at the time, still very much pro-Assad. And today, we were seeing that shift, not only in Syria, but also in the Golan Heights, seeing scenes of jubilation, people actually expressing how happy they are, how satisfied they are to see that there's an actual change, not so far from, uh, from the border, uh, in Israel, Benita. Meanwhile, we were just discussing here in studio, Emmanuel, the IDF issuing an urgent warning to residents of several southern Syrian villages close to the Israeli border as troops push into that buffer zone between Israel and Syria. What update can you share on that front? Right, and we saw IDF uh, Chief of Staff uh, Herzi Levy also saying that um, Israel is now fighting a fourth front, adding the Syrian front to uh, the West Bank, Gaza, and Lebanon, of course. And, uh, and of course, this is also all happening amid a very fragile ceasefire uh, with Lebanon. But of course, the IDF is also securing its positions in this buffer zone, in the buffer zone, right on the border um, with Syria, and not wasting any time striking weapons depots in central Syria in Damascus for fear that uh, any hostile group might actually get their hands on uh, on weapons that uh, that might be directed against Israel uh, Benita and Emmanuel Benjamin Netanyahu we heard earlier on in the show speaking about the desire for peaceful relations extending the same hand of peace to quote our Druze neighbors and the Kurds, Christians and Muslims who want to live in peace with Israel. Talk us through the significance of his message right now on this historic day. Well, it's still a lot of moving parts, and it's hard to know what exactly is going to happen in Syria. But of course, Israel is really looking towards that border to see what might happen. And as I just mentioned, this is all happening as there is uh, a fragile ceasefire with Lebanon. And in fact, also uh, the Lebanese army also reinforced its borders uh, with Syria, which is also important to note. So it's actually interesting to see how here, you know, Lebanon and Israel are actually acting in the same way. But also uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said that this might actually also help uh, the hostage deal on some level. So it might actually be a historic historic day in more than one, but still a lot of moving parts, a lot to uh, wait for and uh, keep an eye out on uh, Benita.